when Savitri gets the command and accepts it and turns to look into herself, to look for her soul, the first thing that happens is that a kind of dream or vision comes to her which reveals all the past of the universe, all the past evolution. And in what we are reading now, um, Sri Aurobindo tells us what she learned through that, through that vision. So we are on page 482 and we read that all the world's possibilities, everything that is um, coded into our material universe that can emerge, all the possibilities are waiting in man, in human beings, just in the same way that a tree, all the future growth of the tree is lying potential in that tiny seed. Mm. And then he said that um, for human beings the past lives in us, all this whole cosmic past. Nowadays, the, uh, the physicists and the biologists can tell us that we are actually carrying the whole history of the universe in our bodies. Hmm? Right from the Big Bang to now, it's all recorded somehow in us. So that past is still living in us, and it is still driving, it is still uh, determining the paths that our future will take. And what we do in the present shapes what our future will be like. Mm. And there are all kinds of powers hiding in this body of ours, this house of life. There are these spirits of the unknown casting their shadow over our minds and causing their dreams to form ideas, live molds of thought in us. And according to those molds, um, our, uh, the human mind constructs its worlds. Mm -hmm. And actually the mind of man is creating the whole universe around him. Everything that has ever happened can happen again, can renew its birth in human beings. And everything that can be, all the possibilities of the future, are already figured, imaged in the human soul. All those possibilities are there. And those possibilities actually come out in action. They get expressed through us in action. And those things that we human beings do create, we said last week, like ruts, like the carts in mud. No? It scores on the roads of the world. And once those ruts are there, then that guides the way things will happen in future. But he says that those lines that our reason doesn't understand what those lines mean, but actually they are lines of the secret purpose of the gods, the cosmic powers who are guiding the world. Mm -hmm. So that's where we stopped last week. So I will read on from there and um, then we'll go back and look at each 
sentence carefully. <clears throat> In strange directions runs the intricate plan. Held back from human foresight is their end and the far intention of some ordering will or the order of life's arbitrary chance finds out its settled poise and fated hour. Our surface, watched in vain by reason's gaze, invaded by the impromptus of the unseen, helpless records the accidents of time, the involuntary turns and leaps of life. Only a little of us foresees its steps. Only a little has will and purposed pace. A vast subliminal is man's measureless part. The dim subconscient is his cavern base. Abolished vainly in the walks of time, our past lives still in our unconscious selves. And by the weight of its hidden influences, is shaped our future's self-discovery. Thus, all is an inevitable chain, and yet a series seems of accidents. The unremembering hours repeat the old acts. Our dead past round our future's ankles clings and drags back the new nature's glorious stride. Or from its buried corpse old ghosts arise, old thoughts old longings, dead passions, live again, recur in sleep, or move the waking man to words that force the barrier of the lips, to deeds that suddenly start and o'erleap his head of reason and his guardian will. An old self lurks in the new self we are. Hardly we escape from what we once had been. In the dim gleam of habits passages, in the subconscious darkling corridors, all things are carried by the porter nerves and nothing checked by subterranean mind. Unstudied by the guardians of the doors and past by a blind instinctive memory, the old gang dismissed, old cancelled passports serve. Nothing 
is wholly dead that once had lived. In dim tunnels of the world being and in ours, the old rejected nature still survives. The corpses of its slain thoughts raise their heads and visit mind's nocturnal walks in sleep. Its stifled impulses breathe and move and rise. All keeps a phantom immortality. Irresistible are nature's sequences. The seeds of sins renounced sprout from hid soil. The evil cast from our hearts once more we face. Our dead selves come to slay our living soul. A portion of us lives in present time, a secret mass in dim inconscience gropes. Out of the inconscient and subliminal arisen, we live in mind's uncertain light and strive to know and master a dubious world whose purpose and meaning are hidden from our sight. Above us dwells a superconscient God, hidden in the mystery of his own light. Around us is a vast of ignorance, lit by the uncertain ray of human mind. Below us, sleeps the inconscient, dark and mute. Savitri is being shown all this because it's important for her to know it when she embarks on this search for her soul. And Sri Aurobindo is sharing it with us because it's important for us to know it if we want to know ourselves, find out about our deeper being, not just this surface appearance. Hmm? Rosa, you'll begin. <coughs> In strange direction, directions, around the implicated plan held back from human foresight is the end, and the far intention of some ordering will of the order of life's arbitrary chance finds 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 out its settled voice and faded out. Yes. In strange directions, here and there, runs the intricate plan. Something that is intricate is very complicated. Sometimes we see beautiful pieces of old jewelry that have been made with very intricate lines of silver and uh, 
stones in set. So it's a very complicated plan and the lines of it run here and there and we can't see where they are leading, where they will end. That is held back from human foresight. Foresight is we can look ahead, we think oh this might happen, that might happen, but we can't see where these lines of the secret purposes of the gods are leading to. No? And we don't see how the far intention of some ordering will, that plan has been worked out by a will which said it should be like this and that will has created that intricate order with an intention. There's, a, there's an aim and a purpose. So that far intention, far ahead, that intention of that ordering will which has set things going, and that lies in the future. That's not the only thing which is acting here. There is that ordering will, but there's also at the same time a different kind of order. The order of life's arbitrary chance. Something that is arbitrary doesn't have any particular reason. It just gets decided like that without any uh, intention. It's just arbitrary. It just So there's many aspects of life which are like that, which happen by chance, arbitrary chance. But these two things acting together, or one acting against the other, hmm, these things together find out its settled poise and fated hour. They make sure that every single thing happens in a particular way. A settled poise, a balance, and the fated hour. Our surface watched in vain by reason's gaze, invaded by the opportunity of the unseen, helpless recalls the accident of time, the involuntary turns and leaps of life. Mm. Our surface this surface consciousness that we live in, this body and mind and life that we are aware of. The reason that's our highest uh, faculty at the moment watches what is happening on our surface, but he says it's watched in vain. The reason can't do much to influence what is happening on the surface because this surface gets invaded something comes in unexpectedly all the time he says the impromptus of the unseen there are invisible things that are influencing us actually the word impromptu or as Martin nicely pronounced it in French, impromptu. Um, it's a name that we give to pieces of music that are just improvised. They are not thought out in advance. So it means it's not, uh, doesn't seem to be planned, no? something spontaneous. Uh, so something that these spontaneous things are coming from the unseen worlds and always intervening on the surface. So that's why the reason can look and plan and say it should be like this and like that. 
these impromptu, they, um, <laughs> they pop up and disturb our plans. So the surface mind just records the surface consciousness, our surface being, even our body, just records, it registers the accidents of time, things that just happen like that. And these involuntary turns and leaps of life, something that is involuntary happens without your willing it. No? There are many uh, movements of our body which are involuntary, they just happen. No? If, the, if the doctor um, taps your knee, you, you can't help it, you have to make that movement. No? So there's many things like that in life. Yes, Sergei? Well, I had a question just now, blind, the it is opposite predicted uh, fate. Sorry? The line 320, invaded by the impromptus. Yes. It is the opposite of uh, predicted de de uh, destiny. Yes. There's that ordering will, but there's also this play of chance. No? And uh, our surface being doesn't see what is going on. It doesn't know what is the effect and the direction of that ordered will. And it's all the time being affected by these things coming up from what is unseen and unexpected. Jesus Christ had told his testament that you want this piece of hair, you mm. must fall down without his will. So there's that aspect to it, but ah, here ah, he's ah, telling us that there's another aspect ah, to it. Mm. Okay, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Records the it says our surface, so it's our surface being, our surface consciousness. Um, that is what records. Yeah. So these accidents of time, they have the f effects on all our surface being, on our body, on our life, on our mind. Uh, Sergei, you would read? Hmm? Only a little of us foresees its steps. Only a little has will and purpose to pace. The last subliminal is man's measureless part. The dim subconscious is his color ways. Yes. So this says it in very, very clear words. No? We may have purposes. No? A little of us can foresee its steps, we can plan, oh, I'm going to come to the Savitri class this afternoon, but still, until we actually get here, uh, anything can happen. No? A little of us foresees its steps, only a little part of us has will and purposed pace. It can move, uh, a pace is a step, the way that you move, hmm? can move forward with purpose. But the, the much, much larger part of us, our measureless past, part, the part in us that's so vast that we can't see how deep and wide and high it is, that is the vast subliminal. It's all the parts of our being that are beyond the threshold of our consciousness. The threshold is the, the, the door sill that we step over to enter a room. So behind the door, behind the veil, across the threshold is that subliminal, vast, our measureless part. It's much, much larger and more powerful than this little surface being that we are aware of. And below that, there's the dim subconscious, like a dark cave, a, ca 
cavern, it's a big cave. Mm -hmm. So that is like our, our base, our foundation, is that dark black cave. We had foresight, no? Held back from human foresight is the end of these lines of the purpose of the God. And here it says, only a little of us foresees its steps. No? There's a small part in us which has some uh, sense of where it wants to go. It can plan and see ahead a little bit. No? But that's a very, very small part of us. There's this vast unseen and from there these impromptus are coming and interfering with the plans we make on the surface. Dim. There's not much light there. No? Actually, we've got very dim weather at the moment. That's why we have to have the light on. Yeah? Dim means with only very little light. Uh, who's, oh, Gumsun, uh, you are hiding away there. Would you read? <coughs> Our past lives still in our This is verb, lives. Mm -hmm. Our past lives still in our unconscious slaves. And by the weight of its hidden influences, it shaped our future self discovery. Yes. So, we think that what is past is past that it no longer exists, that it's been abolished. But he says it's been abolished in vain. We, it may be finished with, but it isn't finished with. No? It's finished in the walks of time, but it's still living on. Our past is still living on in our unconscious selves, in those parts of ourselves that we are not aware of. And from there it is influencing us. And influence is something that uh, affects us, presses on us. So he says the, it's as if it's pushing the weight of the hidden influences of our past is shaping the course of our future, the discovery of ourselves that we are going to be able to make in the future. Mm -hmm. Thus all is an inevitable chain and yet a serious series of accidents. So all together, all these things together means that in fact everything is an inevitable chain. One thing has to follow what went before. It's inevitable. It can't be avoided. It's absolutely necessary that it happens like that. And yet to us we experience it as a series of accidents of unexpected chance happenings. Would you like to read, please? The unremembering hours repeat the old acts, our dead past run, our future ankles clings, and drags back the new nature's glorious stride. Or from its buried corpse, all ghosts, all ghosts arise, all thoughts, all longings, that passions live again, recur in thee, or move the walking man. The waking man. The waking man. Towards that voice, the barrier of the lips, 
to deeds that suddenly start and go on his head of reason and his God in the Yes. So the hours are passing. They don't remember what has happened in the past, but because of that influence, the weight of that influence, they repeat the same kinds of things that have happened before. So that past which we feel is dead, well, it may be dead, but it's still clinging around our ankles as if we are work, walking through an undergrowth and there are vines there or perhaps there are uh, invisible spirits holding on to us things from the past no? and they are holding us back we would like or there's something in us that would like us to move forward with a glorious stride, a brave, courageous, powerful step, but all the time these influences from the past are holding us back. So maybe the past is dead, maybe it's even been buried, but from that buried corpse, from that dead body, old ghosts rise up phantoms I, they've read these old ghosts they come up in the thought in the form of thoughts of longings things that we wish or we used to wish for now they come up again things that we felt about very very passionately and intensely and we've forgotten, they are dead, they belong to our past. Suddenly they come up again. They may come in sleep, or they may even come up when we are awake. Then we, we don't notice them so much, but suddenly we find ourselves saying something. And we wonder, where did that come from? How could I have said those words, no? Words that force the barrier of the lips. They, these words just come out. No? Or they, though the influence of the past may move us to deeds, to actions that come suddenly and they just leap past what our reason would tell us. They just force us to do things that our reason uh, maybe would have advised us better not to do that. No? And our guardian will that tries to keep us on the, uh, to avoid those kind of things happening, unwilled, involuntary things happening. But they come so suddenly, they just ex manage to express themselves. They're coming from this weight of the past influences. Words is a noun and force is the verb. To words that, for, they just force themselves out of this barrier. Yeah. Yeah, to, to be heard, the words have to pass this barrier of the lips. Hmm? They force their way out hmm? unexpectedly. Anybody has anything else to ask? Hmm? You like to read? An old self versus the new self we are. Hardly we escape from what we once have been. In the deep dream of Edith's passages, in the subconscious darkening corridors, all things are carried by the quarter nerves, and nothing checked by subterranean mind. Unstudied by the guardians of the doors, and passed by 
client instinctive memory. The old gang dismiss all cancel passports, sir. Mm, thank you. So we we are this surface self now, but there's an old self hiding inside. Mm. And it's very difficult for us to escape from what we have been in the past. With difficulty, hardly, almost impossible for us to escape what we had been in the past. And that's because... Uh, you may be like karma. But there are all kinds of things in the past, no? Memories, as he says, thoughts, longings, passions, all these old influences. So whatever it is that we have been and done and experienced in the past, those things uh, can express themselves through us. Mm -hmm. And how does this happen? This happens in several different ways. In the dim gleam of habits passages. We may have habits we formed in this life, but maybe in our inner being there are habits we formed in past lives. And we know how difficult it is to consciously change a habit. We can do it. Habits can be changed. But if we're not really aware of them, if they're coming from some old self, then very difficult to change, no? So habit has its passages, its paths that it follows, its underground passages in our subconscious. So those passages, those corridors, uh, are very dim. There's not much light there. No? And uh, there are the subconscious darkling corridors. They are even darker than the dim gleams of the passages of habit. They are, they are really beginning to be re dark. No? All these things from the past are carried, they're moved around inside us by the nerves. He says the nerves are like porters. They are just employed to carry things. They don't ask what they are carrying and why they are carrying it. They just carry things from one place to another. And there's nobody checking because there, there is a kind of mind there but it's an underground mind, subterranean, means underground, under the earth. Um, so it doesn't check what the nerves are doing. There may be guardians there, people guarding the doors, but they are not really doing their job because they are uh, unconscious or careless or because these things are familiar, they are from old habits, old influences. Mm -hmm. The guardians of the doors don't uh, look carefully to see what is being passed through, what's being carried through by the porters. They are being um, passed by a blind instinctive memory that remembers, oh yes, seen that fellow before, let him pass, let him pass, no? looks familiar. So all these things that we thought we had freed ourselves from, the old gang dismissed. When he says a gang, it sounds like a group of corrupt politicians and they've been uh, voted out of power, they've been dismissed, they shouldn't be there anymore. But uh, they creep in unnoticed. Their passports have even been cancelled, you know, that they are not allowed to enter 
but those old cancelled password passports because nobody's checking properly. They just flash them and come through. Yes, Sergei. This is the portal. It is a French portier. Well, yes, but it's an ink. No, a portier is a door. Hmm? Somebody who is waiting in a hotel, the portal. Like a concierge. concierge. No, in English what a porter means is somebody who carries things. You, you arrive in the train and there are all these people there who are ready to carry your luggage. Hmm? These are the porters. So that's what the nerves do. Of course some of the things they carry are messages, sensations, but they can also carry these instinctive memories. Hmm? Yeah. Still the, the passports usually they're cancelled, but they they use them to get in. The old gang, they've been dismissed, but these old cancelled passports still serve them because nobody is checking carefully. Um, Venkat is sitting at the back there. Yeah. Nothing is only that that once have lived in dim tunnels of the world's being, and in ours the old rejected nature still survives. The corpses of its same thoughts raise their heads and visit minds nocturnal walks in sleep. Its stifled impulses breathe and move and rise, all keeps their phantom immortality. Yeah. So whatever has happened in the past, whatever has once lived, it's never completely dead. Hmm? Even though we might have uh, performed a lot of conscious work on ourselves and rejected certain elements in the nature. It, uh, it might not be active, but it's still surviving there in the sub subconscious, in the subliminal. No? The old rejected nature is still surviving in these dim tunnels, these underground passages in the world's being and in our individual being also. Hmm? So maybe those thoughts have been slain, have been killed, they are just dead bodies, corpses, but those corpses wake up again, they raise their heads and uh, particularly when we are asleep they come into the mind. Hmm? The mind wanders here and there, and then those old things come up again. And those impulses which had been stifled, that had, when you stifle somebody, you don't allow them to breathe. You kill them by smothering them. No? So we do that sometimes with impulses. We feel things and we know, oh, that's not a good thing. And we we stifle it, we press it down, but they stay down there oh, and they come up again. They start to breathe and to move and up they come. So everything that ever has been keeps some kind of immortality in the form of a ghost, a phantom. Not a full-blown reality, but enough to exert an influence. Joel. Irresistible are nature's sequences. The seeds of sins renounced sprout from hid soil. The evil cast from our arts once more we face. Our dead selves come to play to sleep or living soul. Yes. Oh, a sequence is one thing following another. Hmm? 
So in nature there are sequences, series, and if the first one comes, then the others will follow after. And those sequences of nature are irresistible, they're extremely powerful. They are such ancient habits, they've been established for such a long time doing things in this way. No? So, there are sins, wrong things in us, which we may have renounced, we may have given up, rejected, long ago in the past, but they left some seeds behind. And in that hidden soil of our unconscious being, those seeds sprout up again. Any evil influences, wrong influences, that we've really thrown out of our hearts, rejected them, uh, they've fallen down there into the subconscious, and up they come again. They show themselves to us, as um, from outside perhaps they come to us. So those selves, all the series of selves that we have been in the past. Those selves are dead, but their influence comes back and it may try to slay, to destroy our living soul. It may have very bad influence. <laughs> So, and then he sums all this up, Mahalingam. The portion of us lives in the present day. The secrets mass in deep inconscience groups. Out of inconscient and subliminal, arising with live in minds, uncertain lives. I strive to know and master the dubious world, whose purpose and meaning yeah, thank you, yes, so, a portion of us, a part of us is living in this present time, but there's all that mass, a secret mass, which is in the dim inconscience, beyond our awareness. And there it is groping, it's feeling its way around. There's not enough light of consciousness there, so it has to feel its way around. When we rise up as conscious human beings, we do rise up out of the inconscient and the subliminal, then we live in this uncertain light of the mind. Here there's some light, but that light is not very clear and it's not very reliable. It's uncertain. Here we use that uncertain light to try to know and to control. We would like to control this world around us. But this world is also very dubious doubtful. We don't know actually what it is for. We don't know its purpose. We don't know its meaning. We don't know what it is really. Those things are hidden from the, our sight, from the sight of our mm. mind. Mm. No? You read, Uma? Yes. So here we are in the world. Above us, we, we may feel or we are told that there's a divine being, but he's super conscious. He's above the reach of our consciousness. Hmm? He's hidden from us in the mystery of his own light. 
we can't really look at the sun, no? Its light is so powerful. No? Then around us is this vast of ignorance, all the things we half know or don't know anything about at all. The only light we have is this uncertain ray of human mind. That's like a, a, a thin ray, it lights up a little bit at a time. No? And below us, sleeping is the inconscient. So there's a superconscient, there's an inconscient, and here we are in the middle, struggling with our human mind. That inconscient is completely dark and silent. So then he says, this is not the whole story, but this corresponds to uh, our experience. If we are observant about ourselves, we will be able to confirm everything that he's uh, told us here. In strange directions runs the intricate plan. Held back from human foresight is their end, and the far intention of some ordering will, or the order of life's arbitrary chance, finds out its settled poise and fated hour. Our surface watched in vain by reason's gaze, invaded by the impromptus of the unseen, helpless records the accidents of time, the involuntary turns and leaps of life. Only a little of us foresees its steps, only a little has will and purposed pace. A vast subliminal is man's measureless part. The dim subconscient is his cavern base. Abolished vainly in the walks of time, our past lives still in our unconscious selves, and by the weight of its hidden influences is shaped our future's self-discovery. Thus all is an inevitable chain, and yet a series seems of accidents. The unremembering hours Repeat the old acts. Our dead past round our future's ankles clings and drags back the new nature's glorious stride. Or from its buried corpse old ghosts arise, old thoughts, old longings, Dead passions live again, recur in sleep, or move the waking man to words that force the barrier of the lips, to deeds that suddenly start and o'erleap his head of reason and his guardian will. An old self lurks, in the new self we are. Hardly we escape from what we once had been. In the dim gleam of habit's passages, in the subconscious darkling corridors, 
All things are carried by the porter nerves and nothing checked by subterranean mind. Unstudied by the guardians of the doors and passed by a blind instinctive memory, the old gang dismissed, old cancelled passports serve. Nothing is wholly dead that once had lived. In dim tunnels of the world's being and in ours, the old rejected nature still survives. The corpses of its slain thoughts raise their heads and visit mind's nocturnal walks in sleep. Its stifled impulses breathe and move and rise. All keeps a phantom immortality. Irresistible are nature's sequences. The seeds of sins renounced sprout from hid soil. The evil cast from our hearts once more we face. Our dead selves come to slay our living soul. A portion of us lives in present time. A secret mass in dim inconscience gropes. Out of the inconscient and subliminal arisen, we live in mind's uncertain light and strive to know and master a dubious world whose purpose and meaning are hidden from our sight. Above us dwells a superconscient God, hidden in the mystery of his own light. Around us is a vast of ignorance, lit by the uncertain ray of human mind. Below us sleeps the inconscient, dark, and mute.